Recording. Hi, Rich. Jack, how you doing? Good, good. We're, uh, talk We're here to talk about God of War on the Sony. So uh, God of War is the story of an old man Kratos who has a new family, except for much like his old family, uh, his wife died. Uh, this time, presumably not at his hands, but uh, the, the entire story is Kratos and his son have to take the ashes of the dead wife slash mother to the tallest mountain in all the realms. And, and Kratos has killed all of the Greek gods. So now we're gonna rampage all over Norse mythology. By the way, I just need to say right off the bat, what a great concept. This is, a, this is like mythology fan fiction. <laughs> yeah. Is what if these two gods fought each other, who would win, right? <laughs> also kind of a nice like, what if the gods were real, but this is why they don't exist anymore. Because, <laughs> because this guy ran around killing them all. One god just killed them all. <laughs> no, it, it's, it, a, it's a fun concept. Look at that. It's Thor. Thor, god of thunder. That's right. I never thought you'd listen when Mother spoke of the gods. I seldom did. Did she speak of one who could feel no pain? Oh, that sounds like Baldur. Baldur. An Aesir god. Son of Odin and Frigg. And Odin is king. That's right. All right, so here's 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 me coming into this into this game. All right, here's I'm gonna just disclosure on my history with the God of War series. Yeah. I I started playing the first one, and then I, I don't even think I got halfway into it before I just kind of gave up. Sure. I I hated the quick time events, and as I was a fan of Ninja Gaiden at the time, and I'm still a fan of Ninja Gaiden. God of War, the original, just felt so mashy in comparison. You just hit X and occasionally like the triangle on these just blades were just going all over where and it didn't it didn't felt like I was really doing moves. Like it didn't feel like I was deliberately doing things. It felt like I was hitting the button and then these blades would just go everywhere and kill everything. Yeah, it was a bit of a of a spectacle fighter. Um, I the only God of War game I played is the first one. Uh, but I played it all the way through and enjoyed it. Uh, to me, uh, I'm a big fan of stuff like the Dynasty Warriors series. And so that kind of dumb, mow down all the enemies, I'm the super powerful guy that kills all the other guys. I liked that about the original God of War, though uh, I agree the quick time events were a little much and the boss fights in the original God of War, which were basically elongated quick time events, didn't quite land right. But, you know, most of all, I felt the combat in the first one was fine. But then here, here we are today. Here we are today. Uh, new, new God of War, yeah. and um, the trailers came out, and it, it looked like a Naughty Dog game. It look, looked like we're, we're, we're doing a lot of walking around, we're doing a lot of talking, there were a lot of, there were a lot of questions. Kind of looked like God of Last of Us. Yeah, yes. like, like, is this, is the combat going to be gone? Is this just going to be God of Last of Us? Yeah. And no, no, it's... It's a fun action game. I was pleasantly surprised. I was expecting just talking nonstop and here's a token action sequence. To, to counter that a little bit, there is a lot of talking sequences and there's a lot of breaks in the gameplay, but when you do get into that combat, it is heavy and satisfying. So that's the thing, I, I hate uh, the Last of Us. Yes. I, I despise The Last of Us. I know that about you. I despise what little I played of Uncharted 4. Mm -hmm. I, I despise The Order 1886. Yes. Yes. I, 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 every cinematic game, because that's, that's where single players have been going in the recent years. Single player games have been doing the cinematic shit. Yeah, yeah. And I fucking can't stand it because they prioritize. There's got to be, like, it's like a movie. And here's the scene where they have the emotional moment and they prioritize that over gameplay. Yes. It's like, we're, we're gonna do this thing and they talk and he, he gets his heart broken, but then the third act, what about, what about the action? And a third person shooter? And it's, the gameplay is such a fucking second thought. <laughs> and I was right. so pleasantly surprised coming into God of War 
There is a fucking solid combat system in this game. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, it it feels, unlike the old God of War games, it feels just deliberate. Mm -hmm. I, I feel like every move I'm doing in this game, it's not, ah, I'm pressing X and hoping for the best. It's like, it's a thought that's put into it. I'm going to throw my axe at that guy over there. I'm going to freeze him. And then I'm going to charge him, do the shoulder ram. <laughs> then I'm going to throw my axe at the other guy. But after I throw the axe at that other guy, I'm going to use my, because I got my bare fist. Now I'm going to punch this guy in the face. Right. Well, and there there is like different incentive systems within the combat. You know, you have your axe, which is, by the way, an awesome weapon. Uh, but if you hit people with your bare fists, it does less damage, but it builds up your your kill them instantly o meter. Well, they, they have a they have a stun. Enemies have like a little stun bar in addition to their health bar. Yeah, yeah. And if you hit them with the axe, that doesn't do much for the stun, but it takes down their actual health. Mm -hmm. Usually, 99.9% .9 of all cases in the game, that health bar does not grow back. Right. How, however, you can, you can use your bare fist and punch them in the face. That builds up the stun meter. Mm -hmm. But that stun meter, that goes away. So it's like the risk versus reward. It's like, do you use the axe, just get the permanent health down, or do you, do you take that risk, you punch them in the face for a few times, build the, the stun all the way up, and then you can do like the, the glory kill. Right, well, and they do a, a, a really decent job of mixing up the enemies, because you know, you're very rarely just fighting one enemy. It's usually a horde of enemies. And some enemies, it's easier to take them down with a stun kill, with a glory kill. And other enemies, it's easier just to use your weapon. And so like, it, it turns into this really great axe this guy, throw my axe to stun that guy, take my fists out on this guy, rip him apart. Oh wait, gotta use the shield now. <laughs> yeah. Oh, and that, that uh, repost, shield reposting is great. There's, yeah. a, there's a nice balance to what you have to do. And it all feels weighty. I, I think that's just because it feels deliberate. It's, it's, be. it's purposeful axe swings rather than, like you do get the Blades of Chaos in this game. Spoiler Spo alert! Spoiler. And they feel very mashy. It's less satisfying because the Blades of Chaos, yeah. they just swing all over the place and they just hit everything around you. And it's, it's so much less satisfying than the axe. Though, with the Blades of Chaos, you do get to throw a blade and get over here an enemy, which is kind of awesome. It's a satisfying combat system. They did not, they, 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 had, they had their storytelling. We want, to, we want to do the cinematic experience. Okay, fine, but you gotta deliver, you have to deliver on gameplay. The gameplay half of the equation has to be important, and it is. I, I can totally agree that combat in God of War is awesome, is super awesome and satisfying. And beyond just basic combat, it has a whole leveling system. You get to upgrade your moves, your armor, learn new moves, choose from, a, a, from two different super moves for both of your weapons and your fists, and for rage mode, which is a whole nother thing, which is a kind of an, oh shit, I'm really low on health button. Yeah. <laughs> and then you go into Spartan Rage. Uh, it has a really vast customization process. No, and you know, you get to kind of fine tune your combat. There's long range attacks, there's short attacks, there's stun attacks, and you kind of get to figure out what combat style you like the best. Mm -hmm. And it's all pretty awesome. Yeah. And uh, on top of that, there is a complete another leveling system for Atreus, your son who is with you on this journey, who is kind of uh, your, your buddy in combat. He's got his little bow and arrow. You can target specific enemies for him to shoot his arrow at, or he just kind of is running around a little ass kicker. <laughs> <laughs> he does his own thing. Uh, his, his, his arrows are good to purposefully use, though. Mm -hmm. You, you can get some, some nice kills from a distance, or you can stun some enemies before they can do a big attack if you hit them at the right time with the bow. Oh, yeah. Ah, that works! Well, and you know, that you, you can upgrade, you know, the damage that he does, too. He does this thing where he kind of, like, jumps on an enemy's back and, you know, chokes him a little bit, and then if you upgrade a certain thing, you do more damage while he's choking an enemy out. It, it actually feels like his combat AI feels very intuitive to what you're doing, or maybe it's just you're paying attention to him. Well, it also feels like this inexperienced kid gets better as the game goes on. Is it, 
Is it just me, or does it seem like by the end of the game, he's doing more shit on his own than he did at the beginning? I mean, you do unlock more things as the story goes on. But I mean just choosing to do them on his own. It seems like he, by the end of the game, he was, he was doing more of the jumping on people's backs <laughs> than he did in the early game. Maybe, maybe, maybe that's something they did, or maybe that's just me not noticing. I don't know, <laughs> but it could be a thing. Sure, sure. I, I can't say for sure. I okay. can't say for sure. Uh, all I can say is uh, when you do your super D moves, uh, oftentimes uh, Atreus will jump off of your back <laughs> and in slow motion shoot arrows at bad guys. It, it turns into this like perfect action sequence where yeah. you're like, oh, it's great. <laughs> it's all great. And you know, coming in, coming into this game, I was a little worried about Atreus. I had heard some murmurings about Atreus. You know, this was going to be a, a game-long escort mission, or he's very annoying, or he's overpowered in combat, and so Kratos isn't even doing anything, and all of that is wrong. He, is, he, he can't die. It's not an escort mission. He's just there as a helper. He, uh, he actually, I enjoyed the audio cues. Uh, when an enemy is about to attack, there's arrows yeah. telling you what direction they're coming from, and different colored arrows uh, are different enemy intents. You know, if they're really close to attacking, it's a red arrow, ye or yellow arrows, white Pink arrows. Pink is long range attack. Yeah. Right. But uh, a lot of times that gets lost in the visual noise of the game. And so Atreus also calls out when enemies are about to attack, and I found that to be very helpful. Okay. And I liked it. Yeah. So here's the thing, all the combat I thought was really good. Yeah. And I enjoyed a lot of it. It does have some problems. It's speaking purely of the combat, the first problem that I think everyone will notice is there is a lack of enemy variety. I'll agree with you on that. You fight, you know, dudes with the orange insides, and then later they're color swapped to the dudes with the blue insides. Like fake enemy variety. It's like the, the fire version, and then there's the ice version. Yep. yep. Yeah. Uh, e even the different classes of enemies don't necessarily visually look that different. Like, we, there's some variation. You know, there's the cool, like, mist witch one. But, you know, there's, like, small dude, medium dude, big dude, and they don't really look that different from a distance. Well, the, the design is very uninspiring. Yeah. Design-wise, just enemy design-wise, they could learn some things from From Software, <laughs> but... Fucking, they can learn something from their background artists. I was more interested in looking at the beasts in the background than I was anything I was fighting. Yes. The... <laughs> it was still fun to fight them. Still fun to fight them. Still fun to fight them, but that led to a little bit of repetition. Then, for me, and this is where we're going to start into the for me territory, okay. because this is where you and I, yours and I's paths <laughs> diverge, Rich. For me, there was too much in between each combat. Now, is there is there too much in between combat, or is there just you dicking around too much in between combat. There's a lot of optional shit in this game. Like you see a lot of those chests that have the three runes and it's like a puzzle. You gotta find the runes to destroy them so you can open the chests. And you might end up dicking around with that for 10 minutes. Yes. And you think, oh, there's really long spans of time in between content, you know, combat. Yeah. But really you were fucking around with this chest for 10 minutes when you didn't have to. Here's, here's my issue with that. Okay. After you finish the story of the game, you can keep playing mm -hmm. and do whatever you want in the game, you know, do all the side quests, find all the treasures, do all the things. That was something that I was unaware of. Okay. And so I do think I would have spent less time trying to find every single treasure and, you know. Why, why would you think the game wouldn't let you go back and dick around after the fact? That's pretty standard. That's pretty normal. In an open world game? I guess I had underestimated the open worldiness of the game. And so I was expecting, you know, I was expecting something so much more linear that when it's done, it's done. And who knows if I'd be able to go back. 
So I, I, I hear what you're saying. Was the time in between combat inflated by me dicking around? Maybe. Okay. But there was still time in between combat. That I thought had... some of the puzzle solving elements were clever with the axe. And... Some of them were clever. What You see the symbol and you know you have to freeze a thing and then you see the board with all the marks on it so you throw your axe at it. It was the same puzzle over and over again. And then the other half of the puzzle wasn't even puzzles. It was just you have to find the next button prompt. There was that much of that. I, I, I really don't. I felt like there was a lot, and I know you know me. I don't like generally care about the story anyway, so that could just be my own personal bias. But hey, that's what the show's about. Yeah, so yeah. I felt like it was too much, and I I just wanted I just wanted to fight people. I just wanted to fight people. <laughs> do Do you not think? And I, I I'm not saying I'm absolutely right or wrong. I'm just just I'm throwing this out there. Throw it out. Is it possible, Jack? Is it possible that if if we're just wall to wall nonstop combat, it might have felt old after a while? Yes. It would have worn on you. It would have. But I feel like they could have balanced that a little bit better because so you, know, so you like a little bit more combat relative to everything else. Relative to okay. anything else, and you know, like they had. They had some, some of the side quests, you know, were like treasure hunts, were, you know, specific things to find things on the island. The, uh, they had, you know, combat side quests, the Valkyrie. The Valkyrie side quest, man. Those Valkyrie some of the best boss fights in the game. And this game is good boss fights. Th that Valkyrie fight is above and beyond. Like, that was an amazing. I only did one of them, but that one Valkyrie fight I had was amazing. Like, we didn't, we didn't talk about this earlier, so I'm going to rectify that now. Yeah. This game has some pretty fucking awesome boss fights. It does. The, uh, the Valkyrie fight sticks out to me as top tier boss fights. The other ones are all right. Nah, nah. They're all right. Nah, the Balder fight's fun. Oh, I had big problems with the Balder fight. <sighs> What's your big problem with the Balder fight? The, the, it was, it was uh, inconsequential. Your actions were inconsequential in the Balder fight. How are your actions inconsequential? When, so, you know, you, you punch in Baldur, you do, you do the things. If you run out of health, all of a sudden, out of nowhere, you get the Spartan Rage. to try again. In, in any case, scripted shit was getting in the way of what could have been a brawl. Like the Valkyrie fight was just a brawl. Yeah. That was great. They kept on breaking up my game to have scripted events and story bullshit happen in the Baldur fight well, right off see, the bat. See, I just saw those three different brawls with a little scripted intermission in between every section of the brawl. That's how I viewed that. You can't win. I feel nothing. But you, you feel everything, yet you, you keep trying. I'm not my brother. And if you'd given me what I wanted, it wouldn't have ended this way. But no. Let's finish this. And it was a fun fight. Eh, nah, it wasn't. Really wasn't. Like that, uh, you know, the big dragon thing had some fun moments, but also some uh, some scenic moments, and it just didn't feel it didn't feel like I was doing it. It felt like I was progressing to the next button prompt. The dragon fight, maybe, but what about like the fight against the head dark elf? When he occasionally turns the lights off on the room. Oh, yeah. That's, that's a fun of, fight. That was kind of neat. Valkyrie's a fun fight. When you that fight against Thor's fight. kids, that's a fun fight. That's a fun fight. There yeah. are good boss fights in this game. There's okay boss fights in this game. There's, they're, they're good. I think they're good. Oh, 
Valkyrie fight, the Balder mm. fight, the the Thor's sons fight. Yeah, and the sort the Thor's sons fights. Who knows what their names are? Because who cares? Mjurg in Hjermanshall. I think I think this the the title of this game should be God of War Four. Kratos dunks on the JV squad. What? <laughs> what the JV squad? We get we get none of the big names from Norse mythology. We got Thor's brother. We got these two kids. <laughs> well, you know, Baldur's Baldur's a pretty big name. Baldur's a pretty big name in Norse mythology, Jack. They, they'd be bigger. They're, be big. They're saving it for the sequel. <laughs> Next one's gonna be Thor, and you're gonna meet Odin. What are those? I've never seen the like. That's gotta be a family heirloom. No. Nor will it ever be. Son. My brother and me created Mjolnir for the big idiot. I know from quality. And them, them special. There, there's this power-up that you get later where you can uh, have electric arrows explode red viney things. Yes. And then there are certain puzzles where you, Kratos, has to like take a ball of red stuff and throw it on a thing so your son can shoot it and blow yeah. up a thing, right? That leads to a like a big troll boss fight, but the little area where you can pick up the red things is still right there. And I I was thinking to myself, oh, what a fun, what a what a fun alternate of this fight where I'm gonna just explode them with these red things because they're here. Ha <laughs> ha, game. This will be. Oh, I can't pick it up. Oh, I can't pick it up. I can't pick it up. A mild letdown. Not a game killer. But a mild letdown. But I, yes. I feel like the game was full of little stuff like that. Like it, it was filled with lack of choice. Like, do you remember after the the Thor's sons fight? Yeah. Yeah. Atreus starts coughing, and there's this story thing that says like how he was sick as a child, and he's he's a sickly kid, and he starts coughing, and you can tell he's really sick. Yeah. And the head, because you have a dismembered head on your belt says that, hey, maybe we should take the kid to see the witch. Yeah. The coffin, the blood. The boy's sick, he needs flair. No! Steady. I was thinking to myself, as a parent, I would like to put the well-being of my child above our mission. So you know what I did? I rode my ass to the witch's house. And you thought something would happen? I thought the witch would would cure my kid. So I rode my ass to the witch's house, and I knock on the door, and she says, you can't come in. She won't answer the door. Did not leave her in the best of moods, did you? Frankly, I'm surprised you'd want to come back here. The coffin, the blood. The boy's sick, he needs flair. No! Did not leave her in the best of moods, did you? Frankly, I'm surprised you'd want to come back here. The boy's sick, he needs flair. Frankly, I'm surprised you'd want to come back here. So then I have to row all, my ass all the way back to the, to the room, and then immediately when I get to my room, my kid passes out, and I gotta row my ass all the way back to the witch, because now the story says it's okay to cure my son. Yeah, but I think this is on you. The story, this, the, their storytelling method, they, they went the cinematic route. Yeah, and like I said, I think it's fine because the gameplay works, but it was obvious they weren't going for a open-ended player agency thing. Why the, would you even try to do this? The head gave me the suggestion of going to the witch. They said it Jack, in game. Jack, you went to Taco Bell and you ordered a cheeseburger. Because Taco Bell says we have cheeseburgers Taco now. Bell does not have cheeseburgers now and they have never had cheeseburgers. The head said I should go see the witch. <laughs> They said in game I should go see the witch, and then the kids said no. I thought that that was a clear choice moment. Find find me a cinematic game that gives you choice moments. I was thinking, what a neat thing, Rich. What a neat thing. Oh, I get to make a parental decision. The mission over my kid. This is a game about bonding with your kid, and it's fucked me. <laughs> 
I just, I just asked for a taco. <laughs> it was fine. I just asked. The taco elements of the game were very enjoyable. They're crunchy, they're meaty. <laughs> it, was, it was a fine taco. I got the, the cheesy gordita crunch. <laughs> I mean... What do we do? Yes. First, you need to cut off my head. Wait, what? I know that they want to tell a very specific story. And so why not? why not integrate some of these storytelling ideas into gameplay elements? Why? Why? I mean, why do they have to? I, why does, why, well, you, well, like, what do you, what do you want? What do you talk, like, what do you want them to do? What are you looking for? So, uh, for example, they're, they're, uh, you know, this whole, the, the whole game is about your relationship to your estranged son. Uh -huh. But there's nothing that you can do to better or worsen your relationship with your son. Okay. So, like, for, for example, what if, and this is something I'm just pulling out of my ass, but, you know, spitballing here. What if there was kind of branching paths with your son and one could make him more effective on the battleground? but would, you know, maybe make him a bit of a dickhead. And the other might make him less effective on the battleground, but could open up some story paths because, you know, you're bonding, you're, you're, you're filling in your relationship with yourself. Like fucking games have a, a mechanic where you can pet your horse and it becomes more attached to you. There's no hug your child button. I found some. Get in the boat, boy. What if, uh, another suggestion, uh, there was some sort of listen to Atreus button? <laughs> okay. And, you know, because, like, already he kind of points you in the right direction, but what if you were having trouble with a particular puzzle and there was a way you could, like, talk with Atreus, because that's his thing. He reads and he's the smart kid, and that would increase your bond. Or... You want a bond meter, is I what want a saying. bond meter, or, or like, like uh, what I kept thinking of, what I kept thinking of is, is something um, that you do in like the Pokemon games with your weak Pokemons, is you let them jump into a battle for a little bit and then pull them back out and you, you take care of an enemy with a with a stronger Pokemon. And maybe you could have something similar to Atreus where instead of, like right now to level up Atreus, yeah. you do all the work. He doesn't have, he doesn't do anything to level up. You give him stuff. That specifically might've been detrimental to the combat though. You're having fun and then, oh wait, no, I got to level up Atreus. Well, it, that might've just been annoying. It might, but it might've been something to think about like you're thinking about your son. And so, and so maybe like you have an enemy on the ropes and instead of you finishing off, you press the arrow button and Atreus can finish him off and that would help level him up. But, but Jack, what? I want to put my axe in that enemy's face. It's no fun if Atreus does it. I want to put right. my axe in that enemy's face right. and just really mash it in there and then drag it, drag it down a bit yeah. so the axe like hooks into the torso. <laughs> and then while my foot's on his chest, just rip the whole thing out. And if Atreus does that, it's no fun. Right. It's almost like you have to make a choice between your needs and the needs of your child. So you're saying... It's arty farty for the, bullshit. For the sake of arty farty bullshit, we need to make the game less fun? <laughs> These, what, <laughs> all I'm doing is spitballing here. Spitballing <laughs> suggestions. Father. No. We do it together. Does every... Does it... Ha just because it can be arty farty bullshit, Jack, does that mean it has to be arty farty bullshit? Is there anything... Is there anything wrong with just them telling this linear story and that's a backdrop for their action game where you beat the shit out of giant ogres? There is nothing wrong with it. Okay. But if you, if you are gonna have this story, which is trying very hard to be arty farty, then you have to either compensate for your pacing issues 
or integrate some story elements into your gameplay. This is not a 20 hour story. No. Here, here's, here's, how, here, here's another uh, way I feel like this could be fixed. Compress all these story elements into five, eight hours. You get to the top of the mountain in eight hours. And then the rest of the game is free world, open explore with your son, do all the combat shit you want to do. That entire 20 hour bloated mess. Make it a tight, nice story. And then the player gets to do whatever the fuck they want for 40, 50 hours. I would have loved that. Okay. I, I, I will agree that for an action game, yeah. it is on the long side. I mean, story-wise, everything-wise, not even just story, but even gameplay-wise, maybe a little bit long for an action game. Uh, I, I know that's an odd thing to say. It's like, why is it more better? I, I, it just seems to me an action game, like, I think 10 hours is a fine length for an action game. You get in, you get out. You get in, you get out. And then if you want to keep playing, if you want to, you know, do all the side missions, you can... The game leaves it open for you to keep going after the story yeah. is completed. And I, I really like that if they just shrunk that story down. Okay. I'll, you know what? I, I, you know what? I can do with you on that. Yeah. I, and I feel like, I feel like there's, a, there's a lot of portions in the game where you can really feel that bloat. There's, there's a lot of retreading old areas. And so you, I, I feel like they were trying to get to that 20 hour mark just because Gamers say it has to be 20 hours or it doesn't count, you know? Some of my, some of my favorite gaming experience have actually only been about like five or six hours, honestly. Oh, yeah. No, and I, I feel like th this is a story that could have been told in a short amount of time. You have all your emotional moments. You have your ups and downs. Compress it all. Then, hey, you and your son, you fixed your relationship. Now go fuck everything up. Yeah. That'd be great. I'll, I'll agree with you that it could have been shorter. Yes. Though, though it, it would probably also help if you had that greater enemy variety. Mm. That that might have, that, that might have justified the length a little bit. Or, problem for me is like the combat starts to feel a little bit repetitive towards the end. A little bit, just because you're fighting the same shit. Exactly. Well, but then you're, it's also fixed by a shorter story because then you get to choose where you go. And if this combat's getting repetitive, eh, go on some treasure hunting All missions. Right. You know. All right. I think a lot of things could be fixed with a shorter narrative. Or find a way to incorporate story elements into your gameplay. Find a way to, to have bonding moments with your son into the game. What, what we have right now, story-wise, is, is a, uh, a phrase that I've heard, and I hope I'm using it correctly. I'm going to Google this later. Okay. Uh, uh, what we have here is ludonarrative dissonance. Uh huh. Which is story and gameplay telling opposite narratives. Well, I think this refers to something specifically like uh, the Order 1886. You remember? Don't harm any innocent men, and then you kill everybody. That's. I think that's the kind of thing that Ludo narrative dissonance is referring to. But I specifically, I feel like there are similar elements in here where. The, the thing that Kratos is worried about, he's worried about his son learning about his violent past. Yes. Now, son, watch me tear this monster apart with my bare hands! See, Jack, what you're missing is Kratos can't help what he is. Uh-huh. This I, It just fits. He's trying to teach his son not to be like him, but he's not quite good at it because he is what he is. He knows what he is as a monster. Yes. And he doesn't want his kid to become a monster. Uh, but at the end of the day, he's a monster. And, and as a parent, there is nothing more infuriating than do as I say, not as I do. He's and Kratos, <laughs> being Kratos. Fine, then have the game be about him learning that lesson. But the story doesn't really have him learn that lesson. You want already farty bullshit, and then you get upset when there's already farty bullshit. That's, I don't know what you want. That's, sh that's shallow already farty bullshit, man. You want to pet the kid button. I want to pet the kid button. Let me fucking hug my son. He's Kratos. He's a monster. 
then don't make a, a game about Kratos being a dad or have him turn his kid into a monster or, 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 or do a bunch of other shit. Kratos, Kratos only <laughs> hugs his enemies very, very hard. There, there's some fun in this game. Uh -huh. Kratos uh, doing his best Drax impersonation is very funny. Mimir, the talking head, great comic relief. But fun characters as a backdrop to a game where you run around and you beat up monsters. Yeah. I was fine with it. You know, I just, I, have, I, had, I had big issues with the story. And the, the combat, while fun, gets repetitive. And so, like, overall, like, I, j I just felt pretty meh about, yeah. about this. Okay. Okay. That's the second best thing on the PlayStation for me. Hmm. Wow. Second, uh, yeah. Wow. Bloodborne. You got Bloodborne on top, and you got this. Wow. That's pretty impressive. Yeah. <laughs> worth, worth dusting off the Bloodborne machine. Worth, worth, yes, it's worth dusting off the Bloodborne machine. It's now a Bloodborne. It's now a Bloodborne and God of War machine. Wow. Cool. That's that's quite a recommendation. If I if if you are able to barrel your way through the story, just full blown, don't worry about treasure hunting, run run run, get the story done. It might be worth it. Mm. Okay. You're allowed to not like it. That's fine. Yeah, I just felt pretty it's, warm. It's nice when we disagree, honestly. Well, yeah, it makes a more lively yeah, discussion. Yeah. Instead of just saying it was great. No, it was great. <laughs>